telecoms saw the largest outflow since September of 22, and U.S. small caps had the largest outflow in 11 weeks. So this is obviously something that's starting to resonate with folks out there. And the reason why I want to bring this up is because our next guest is calling for more downside risk across the major indices and specifically technology. So let's bring in Jonathan Krinsky. You know him, friend of the show, chief market technician over at BTIG. Jonathan, I laid out a lot of cases here for why investors overall are seeing more risk out there and want to be more averse to it. Does this, though, spell the end of this particular bull run that we've had so far in 2023? Hey, Dom, good to see you. Um, you know, look, I think when you look at the market in 2023, um, it continues to be kind of a, a tale of two cities, if you will. Um, we know S&P and NASDAQ cap-weighted have done very well. Um, but if you look at below the surface, equal weight, mid-caps, small caps, they're all hitting uh, actually multi-month, if not multi-year, relative lows to those markets. And, you know, most of those indices remain uh, five, eight, nine percent below where they were even in February. So, you know, it's it's a bit of a of a bifurcated market. Um, and then we continue to see more uh, signs of, of breakdowns when we look at um, you know kind of the deep cyclical areas. Whether it's uh, you know the financials continue to struggle, the consumer stocks, retail, the restaurants. Uh, we, we were on <clears throat> with Scott this week talking about the restaurants, and you know that makes sense as we've seen uh, crude oil continue to push to the upside. There's a pretty good inverse correlation there between crude and the restaurants. So there's just a lot of things under the surface that are inconsistent with what you typically see in renewable markets, despite the fact that the S&P is still up something like 15 percent, NASDAQ up 40 percent on the year. So ultimately, we do think um, those those cap weight indices will catch down to kind of the average stock. Um, it's just been, uh, you know, very resilient to this point. So, so the resilience is interesting because the markets overall have been facing, Jonathan, many of these same kinds of points and same kinds of headwinds for the better part of the year. There's been a reason to be negative, yet the market has kept going higher in the in the face of that. I also want to point out, because we want to bring some balance on here and just to kind of give a little bit more fodder for this conversation, uh, Fundstrat's Tom Lee, who who is also very, very evident to people here on this show, talked about the tailwinds that will prevail in the month of September, saying that there's a favorable list of tailwinds building. S&P 500 profit estimates are rising for the third quarter for the first time in two years. Fed officials seem to be shifting away from data dependence. CPI next week should be soft, and we've seen some evidence, although energy prices notwithstanding. The put-call ratio, the sentiment with, the, with regard to the options market, is the highest since March of 2023. And cyclicals are leading with energy, tech, and FANG, some of the best sectors over the past month. Those seem like, yes, they are rosy reasons to be positive. Talk to us about why some of those things could be debunked over the course of the next few weeks. Well, first, uh, you know, we like energy, we, but, uh, you know, that, as, as last year proved, that's not necessarily the best sign for the market when energy starts leading. Um, there's also, uh, you know, this, this news reacting, the market reacting to the news, um, it continues to be bad news is good news, good news is bad news for the market right now. Ultimately, we think bad news will become bad news, and, you know, if we take two um, examples over the last week or so, when we had jolts last week, uh, very, uh, you know, showed fewer job openings, negative news. The market reacted very positively as, uh, you know, anticipated Fed might be done and, and potentially um, cuts, cuts coming next year. And then conversely, uh, this week when we had the hot ISM number, better data, market reacted very negatively. So we're still in that feedback loop where bad is good, good is bad. Um, but again, if you look at, um, you know, kind of the, you know, some of the consumer-oriented data points, some of the, you know, what the retailers are saying, what some of the, um, you know, consumer finance names are saying, what delinquencies ticking up, all of this is, you know, continues to be a headwind. And then the last point I'd make, you know, mega cap tech continues to kind of trade defensively. Again, like we said, when we saw that bad news, um, investors really reacted strongly and, and went into the kind of the perceived safe haven of mega cap tech. You know, ultimately, I, I don't know that that's going to play out um, the same way as we had into the fourth quarter. But, you know, for now, that's how investors are, are taking it. All right. And Jonathan, before we let you go, just so we can put a point on this for some of the, the viewers and listeners out there, what exactly is the degree of downside that we could see? 
Look, I mean, it's it's always difficult to say, um, you know, until we get there. I think the August lows certainly are are in play um, for you know S and P and Nasdaq. Um, so there's some decent downside in the short term to that point. And then beyond that, again, you're you're going to need to see uh, mega cap tech really break down. And even though we've seen you know like Apple and Nvidia pull back a little bit, there continues to be rotation into some of the other Fang names. So really to get that move, you know, back to 4,200 in the S&P, which we do think is possible later this year, you're going to need to see full, you know, full scale selling across the Fang complex. Um, and so we think that's a possibility, but we just haven't seen it yet. All right. That's the perfect segue. It's almost like we planned this. Jonathan Krinsky, thank you very much. Have a nice weekend, sir.